You are listening to The Lead Podcast, a production of Siouxland Public Media. I'm host Sheila Brummer. We all want to be better people, and the goal of this media project is to listen to insight from experts to help us empower, act, develop. That is something the Executive Director of Girls Inc. of Sioux City, Mandy Engel Cardi, does on a daily basis. So Mandy, thank you so much for taking part in the the LEAD podcast. Um, I appreciate your insights. I know we already know each other. Um, I'm a board member of Girls Inc. and have been there for just about six years. And you, how long have you been in your post um, as the executive director? On August 22nd, it'll be 20 years. 20 years. This year, 2022. Wow. Mm-hmm. What have you learned over those 20 years when it comes to leadership? What have I not learned is maybe the bigger question because you you really do learn on the job. And you, I, for me anyway, I learn anywhere I am and every culture is different. The Obviously, the priorities of an organization, the mission are different. What I have learned at Girls Inc. over the years is that there is going to be an evolution in your leadership, and it, it is an evolution of priorities as an organizational leader. And I think when I started, my priorities were very programmatic, very um financial, kind of the things that everybody thinks of in a, in a CEO type of position. And I think between my experience there and gleaning what is most needed within the organization to be successful, and also the world's view of leadership and what that means and moving farther and farther from hierarchical and more authoritarian leadership, which that's never been my thing anyway. But, but you know, there are times when you do have to, of course, pull rank, as they say, and, and get tough and make sure that, that outcomes are being met. But to a much more, I think the world has evolved to a much more caring, a much more um, soul focused rather than soul crushing work experience. And we're fortunate to be able to do that. You know, there are a lot of uh, organizations out there where that's just not going to happen because of the nature of the work, you don't get to focus on the growth of others. And for me, I think that's been the biggest change. I started out focused on the growth of the organization and my own growth and then now have very much become dedicated to the growth of staff that and those who, who work with me at the organization. I only see that as positive because I grow when they grow. It, it is a, a critical part of the development of what we do. So all these years, I have beat myself up over the fact that we lose girls after age 14. And they tend to get busy. They tend to get jobs or they're in sports or whatever. Anecdotally, we know at Girls Inc., the biggest reason we lose girls is because they have to take care of younger siblings at home because of the cost of child care and the lack of availability of child care, whether that just be um, numbers or shifts that people are working, you know, that there, there just isn't of child care available 24-7 and they have to do that. Our national organization really strongly focuses on serving teens. They think that's critical. So I always felt like, oh, we're just never going to meet this. We're never going to meet this goal. Then I realized as our women who were girl members started to come back and work for us how critical that part and that piece of their life was and that I really needed to nurture them in the early early stages of their career make sure that they stay in school if they're in college which the vast majority of them that come to work for us are make sure that they have the supports they need we know that those alumni who come through Girls Inc. as staff are often facing the same kinds of challenges they faced when they were girls. Many of them are in foster care. They have a parent in prison. They have an unstable home life. Whatever the situation is, they also have a lot in common as girls. They are having low self-esteem or they're struggling with relationships in their lives or they're struggling with the law or whatever is happening in their lives. I am fortunate enough to be in a position to say, you know what, we're here for you. We can help you. So those teens that I didn't feel like we were serving basically 14 to 18, we are actually serving 18 to about 25. So that's really critical, important, and has been a big part of the evolution of my work. And what do you think makes for a good leader? Empathy, probably number one, understanding that your experience was not positive in whatever position you've been in. How can you try to, within the confines of getting the job done, which is always going to be critical, but how can you make it a more pleasant experience that people want to go to, that they want to be part of, and that they want to be part of the mission and the change that you you bring along? So for me, empathy is number one. 
But along with that, that that's not just, oh, you don't feel good today. I guess it's okay if you never come in. <laughs> we'll still pay you. You know, let's be realistic. That's not going to happen. I think a really good um, sort of framework for me as I think about those issues, because that you know, they're, they are young and they're learning to have a work ethic and all of those kinds of things. This isn't when you came to Girls Inc., you know, where you could come or not that day because you were tired. But I think a really good framework is the difference for us between safe spaces and brave spaces. I always say to our girls, every girl has the right to be safe at Girls Inc. The reality is, though, we can't ensure that all of the time because we're not going to hear somebody whisper something nasty to you and you're eight, you know, there's two eight-year-olds or whatever. We can't always make you safe 100% of the time. We can do everything we can to try to create that environment, but there, we can't really control it. But what we can do is help you be brave enough to face those situations, whether it's at Girls Inc. or wherever, at school, at home, siblings, cousins, wherever you're facing it, that's what we can do. And that's what I try to do with staff as well. You know, you are going to have challenges because you're learning. The more you practice and the more support we can give you in developing skills that will help you deliver programming and and make sure that our mission is met, that's going to make the difference. But you have to be brave enough to do that. And how can we do that? Well, we can make sure that if you fail, and you will fail, that we are understanding and empathetic and say, let's look at how we could do this in a different way. What's interesting is you mentioned failure. One of the things this podcast, I always like to figure out how failures help contribute to future success. And as a leader, do you have something in your background that you, something, maybe a story or something that you'd like to share, maybe about maybe when you were younger or something that maybe didn't go the way you thought, but it helped prepare you to become the leader you are today? Yeah, interestingly enough, I interviewed for a position when we first moved back to this area. When I, I mean, I'm originally from this area and left for 19 years. So when I got married and came back here to raise my children, I had a job interview. And in the job interview, the person said, what was the most difficult decision you've ever had to make? And I really stumbled with that one. I mean, i I just blew it. I just kind of babbled and didn't make up, you know, didn't say anything that was <laughs> interesting at all. Because the most dis- difficult decision I make is something I would only probably share with my husband or, you know, my best friend. And, uh, you know, to make that differentiation 20 years ago, it, it, it's, it would be different than now. I, could, I have lots of different examples that I could give. But back then, of course, my brain went to personal, you know what I mean, not job, because I didn't have the kind of job experience, I think that that I really could give a substantive answer. So for me, that was that in itself made me reexamine, okay, you're getting too much in your head, you know what I mean, in interviews and those kinds of things. And I I think definitely, it's something that is self esteem, it's how much confidence you have. You know, it's interesting to think about people I know, I have a good friend who goes into job interviews, confident as can be and this person says I want to know if if they are good enough for me goes into a job interview saying I want to know if that organization is good enough for me I'm completely the opposite I'm like I'm sorry for existing but (laughs) but not anymore but you know what I mean in those early days when you just didn't have the skill sets and the experience and everything you're so worried about being liked and appreciated and and as a people pleaser somebody who's raised as a people pleaser anyway that adds a layer of complication so I think all of those things in in you know, came together to feel like a failure to me. And it's something that I've learned to say, you know what, it's okay to be all of those things, you just need to figure out how to manage it and how to make sure that others around you are supported enough that they don't have to feel, you know, fall into those pitfalls. So shall we say, it talks about (laughs) empathy and um, anything in your background that helped you maybe be more empathetic to the young women that you serve today. Yeah, I had a really difficult background. Um, I had a, um, a no, I had a very violent, very chaotic, uh, alcohol laden household with three parents, all three of whom had substance issues. And so for me, also growing up uh, in lower level echelons of economics and everything else, you know, I was straight out of the trailer court. And so for me, all of those things came together 
when I started working at Girls Inc. And it was part of the re- it's still part of the reason I think my heart is in it more than anything because I think about those girls who are bearing up and keeping secrets. And that was us. We were taught to be secret keepers because um, of the embarrassment to the family if we told the truth about what was really going on. And you would never have known that probably if you met any of any of the five of us who grew up in that household because um, we just felt we had to push through. And so we never asked, never got help because we never asked for help. And that's the other thing that's really critical, I think, as a leader. I want my staff to know that they can ask for help. And it doesn't matter what it's about. So I had one in my in my office last week. She just bought a new used car. And the poor, I mean, it is a lemon. It is. It was like smoking last week. And it's like, okay, well, I know a guy. <laughs> this I can help you with. I know somebody who can who can help you repair this. You know, when when their world is consumed by something that's happening that is out of their pocketbook, you know, out of the the realm of their pocketbook, out of the realm of their skill set, there and they don't have somebody else they can turn to, your traditional dad or mom who knows all these things, who else are they going to go to? So I want to take the time and make sure to steward them through that process, to give them any connections that I can to help them, whether it's, you know, boyfriend breakup or or girlfriend breakup or um, weight loss, fitness, health, medical things, anything. It's not just the work that you do at Girls Inc. It's about feeling like someone there cares about you. And that's what's going to bring you back to the organization time and time again what they do on a daily basis is exhausting I mean you've got 25 30 girls in a room and with two instructors they all have needs they all it's just like teaching only we're open 7 30 to 5 30 so we have all of these other issues that girls are bringing to them and they need the strength to be able to give back and they can't do that obviously if their well is not filled so to me that is my job to fill their well so that they can then pass it on to the girls you know you're talking about the evolution of young women because that's what you deal with every day but i know as people age and i'm a middle-aged woman um how does leadership change when you become a person of a certain age or you're trying to figure out, hey, what do I want to do next? Am I the right kind of leader? I don't know if you have any insight that you'd like to share with that kind of question. Well, I'll try. I, I think it's interesting because I look at LinkedIn now, for example, and look at all of these very, very ambitious people who are really working so hard to put their best foot forward and put their put themselves out there in a way that's makes them vulnerable and yet it's they are just pushing their careers forward I have so much admiration for that for me um, it has transitioned to very much becoming about helping other people who want to do that and I that doesn't mean I don't want to make things better at Girls Inc every day I do try to we always try to do new programs and new techniques and new you know ideas whenever we can have it but my focus isn't on myself and my career and where am I going my focus is now on you what do you want to do how can I help you get there Mandy, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Sure. I was very fortunate in the last year to have an opportunity through our national organization to have a mentor from Cummins, uh, the Cummins Machine Corporation. They went through nationals as part of a gift to nationals and also offered the time and expertise of folks who work for them. And I have to say it was really one of the best experiences I have had. I had not had a mentor prior to that, and I was nervous about it. In fact, when they reached out, I'll be honest with you, my brain went to, am I messing something up that I need help, you know, because of, again, those, you know, all the self-esteem things that you question yourself about all the time. But this person uh, that, that what became my mentor was such a tremendously positive influence on me. And I realized because, because and I'm asking, I'm bringing this up because you said to me, is there anything about your childhood or, you know, any part? We were taught not to ask for help, that it was wrong to ask for help and that you were weak if you asked for help. So it's just not something I've ever done. And it really brought to, to light for me the fact that I do need to ask for help. It's okay. And you will only be better, you know, as, as a worker and as a person if you ask for help and then accept it. And for me, it was the best possible thing because it was right in the middle of COVID. I was exhausted, burning the candle at both ends, worried about, you know, the the longevity of the organization and funding and everything that everybody was worried about at that time. And this person 
just brought took out the emotion sucked the emotion out of that because for her it's completely objective she doesn't have that the milieu that of you know trying to function in ah the the crazy what are we going to do next and what's going to happen next she was just like okay here's how we handle these things at our organization and because they're huge and they're very structured i got a lot of great ideas and a lot of great tips so the the thing that I would like to do is encourage everyone. You may not think you have what it takes to be a mentor, but if you do, I mean, we just did it by Zoom. She was in Nashville, Tennessee. I never met her in person. And yet it was amazing. It was an incredibly life-changing experience in the best possible way as far as leadership goes. And you said it was more structured. What tips did you learn from more of a structured standpoint? Well, so for example, they use um, something called the TKI instrument for conflict. I was talking about some conflict in the organization and um, they use a TKI TKI instrument and doing that myself helped me understand what my role in conflict was and it also helped us take that to the girls because you know you don't even you don't have to pay for the whole exam to understand the outcomes of it and to say okay here's my role in how this happens and how can we better handle conflict between girls between staff Uh, any place in the community and for me personally it was great because I really looked at okay the reason one of the reasons for example for me is avoidance you know I'm not a conflict person I don't do well with that and um, and so for me to say okay I have to just sit down again pull the emotion out of it and walk through the facts and be honest about it was really really critical at a time when when emotions were high so um, the in addition to that I think that the just feeling like somebody had a completely had no skin in the game and yet could comment knowledgeably on what was happening she started out as an industrial engineer and yet she worked her way through the organization to become almost like their life coach slash human human resources person you know so she had seen that organization from beginning to end all the different facets of it and so that brought a perspective I think as well that that I needed to hear sometimes just hearing what other people are doing makes you you know go oh okay I, I can do this I've got this if you manage that I can manage this that's Mandy Angle Cardi the executive director of Girls Inc. of Sioux City. She uses her experience to help young ladies in her program and to enrich staff members. Mandy shared how her leadership evolved over the years and how it's okay to ask for help. I'm Sheila Brummer. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Lead Podcast. Lead stands for listen, empower, act, develop. This media project came to life through my work as a reporter, special projects producer for Siouxland Public Media, and graduate of Organizational Leadership Studies at Buena Vista University. The LEAD podcast was launched as a final assignment for my master's degree. I wanted to know what makes a good leader and how we can all improve our lives in and out of the office. Have a great day and thanks for listening.